Well, tonight I'm going to get into a a brief, uh, something we've been talking about uh, and we should always talk about um, is love. So we're going to get into some, maybe a little better understanding. Right now, um, you wouldn't believe what all is going on in Canada right now. It's amazing uh, what they are doing to the Christians and the Christian organizations in Canada. We have a friend named Ken Gill. He's actually been here once, maybe twice. I don't recall if it was twice or not, but definitely once. And um, he is from Canada, and they already have laws passed that are just outrageous. I mean, it's insane. You can't rightly declare that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven in an open setting. That's pretty much done away with. You've got to be, uh, I guess they call it tolerant. Uh, Brock, do you remember some of the, because we read that together. Yeah, can't remember the exact terminology, but they're passing laws left and right, and it's just growing the, the anti-Christ agenda is growing, growing, and growing in Canada. And look, there's, that's right there. You know, I mean, we're, that's awful close. And so what happens is, as Christians, when they hear some of our, what we call our non-negotiables, people throw words like hate. Because we're not accepting and celebrating things that the Bible say don't do. And the word hate, when it's thrown in such a way, you know, the counterpart to hate is love. And so for us to be able to communicate and say, look, there's a reason why God says don't do these things. And it's out of love. He has a love, you know, we, we, we reference the scripture all the time that says, you know, that we might understand or we might know the love that passes all understanding and all knowledge, that the love that's in Christ Jesus, that, you know, it exceeds, uh, that we would know the height, the width, the depth, and the breadth of the love of Christ. It's the love of Christ. Now, I want to read a scripture, John 15, if you want to join me there, John 15, we're going to start in verse 1. If... If we, standing on our convictions and are, are teaching that, preaching that so that God can have His way and He will be glorified and we're going to be accused of hate for such things, we need to be able to def- accurately, accurately explain what actually this is an expression of love. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And so um, let's, if we could, John 15 verse 1, uh, there we go. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide it not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in my love. Now, I want to challenge you. If you're a person who writes in your Bible, underline the word my. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Okay, we're going to, uh, verse 11, the things... Uh, the things have I spoken unto these things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants for the servant knows not 
what his Lord does, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Lord, please add your uh, blessing to the reading of the word in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, a um, lot, of course, a whole lot going on there. I, I would ask, uh, what did anything jump out at, at you guys when we read that scripture? What, what did you guys, if we were to say, what are some of the elements of this text that we just read? We, we learn about love. What else was referenced? Friends. Friendship. Joy. Joy. What else? There's commandments. Ew, everybody go boo. You know, we, we, got, we don't like to hear those things, but they're, they are part of our walk with the Lord. And uh, what else? Abide. Abiding. Yeah. Abiding. And of course, we, you talked about love. And, and it, we hear about love. We hear also about the Father's love and Christ's love. Okay, so Jesus being the one who's made it very clear, He said, I only do what I see the Father do, or I only say what I hear the Father say. And so the Father's love, He tells us here. Now, I want to I make sure we understand where we're at in the context. Jesus is dealing with a bunch of men. He's getting ready to launch into ministry. Okay? He's getting ready to send them out. The day's coming. He already knows that He's going to be crucified. And so he's, he's trying to set them up for the future of, of the purposes of God that are in their life. And He's trying to show them this is a very valid point. This is a huge point that you guys need to get before I send you out. You've got to get this, okay? I want you, and, and so he's talking about the future hereafter. So, he says, he, he talks about his father's love and his own love, and it talks about he kept his father's commandments, and he's telling us that we should keep his commandments. So, what are Jesus' commandments? The same as the fathers. Okay, so so those two are in agreement. All right, the, that that's we know those commandments of, of Christ and the commandments of God are. Uh, so not, I mean, there's you can't separate them from one another. They they are the same. Okay, and so the love that Jesus has is the same as the love that the Father has. Okay, and so if we think about this, even in John three sixteen. Somebody recite, some, anybody know that? Somebody here surely knows. For God so loved the world, he, right? He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believes in Him. Okay. Giving your Son. Now check this out. God wanted us because He loved us so much that He gave His Son. So when we think about love... We have to understand that love is very sacrificial. Okay? Obviously. That's a dear price. And, and some can say, well, he was God. You know, Jesus, he had this. It was easy. No, no big deal for him to go about doing this. Really? And he was talking to his father in the garden. He says, look, if there's another way, I'm all ears. But if not, I'll do this. He felt every burden that we would ever carry. Every form of sin that we could ever, that ever has been thought of or expressed or even occurred here on this earth, he bear, he, the burden of that sin was upon Him. I mean, bam, He carried it and we got set free from that. Okay? And it's amazing that that sacrificial love in doing so, it, let's go a little bit further. God's kind of love is sacrificial, and God's kind of love is also big picture. You with me here on this? It's also a big picture. Now, if we're contrasting, I'm going to call it the world's love versus God's love. Is that all right? We, we know what we're talking about, the, the different types here? Okay. God's kind of love 
is always big picture. He sacrificed one for many, one person, okay? Also, when you read the Scriptures, it goes forward to say that the Lord hardened the hearts of the Jews so that they would not receive Christ as the Savior, so that what? Does anybody remember? So that us Gentiles could, could get it, could be open to receiving the blessing of the Messiah, Christ, the Anointed One. So not only was he willing to take his son, now listen, there was a fellowship there before time, and, and you know, I mean, forever before, there's this fellowship going on between the Father and the Son. And there were, he broke that to bring him to earth to, to help us to have a chance to receive salvation. And so that's just crazy. When, I mean, if you really stop and think about that, that is an insane kind of love that I just don't think us uh, people in general, humans, are going to get it. And then not only that, the, but the breaking of his son, the, the one who's had fellowship with forever before, then he had a chosen people that he put together and went through all these things and watched all this crazy chaos go on within them. The, the establishing of Abraham, all the, the different generations growing together, all them making their mistakes and, but you know, walking through the desert together. I mean, it, it just nuts to come out to, a, to say you, and he would even call me, he said, you are my people. You are my chosen people. You are who I will bless the whole world through. And he would hear, you know, he loved them. And he hardened their heart because he's a big picture. Okay? The world today is probably not so much big picture on a lot of the different issues when it comes to what is called love. A lot of times we like to take it and boil it down to an individual. We make it about one. And now... It's a fact. And so when you really think about how it is that we can as, as and I want to talk, throw this word in also, carnal, us being carnal. That's when we start trying to love like the world loves. That's when we become carnally minded. So when we become carnally minded, a lot of times we'll, be, we'll, we'll turn a kind of blind, allow ourselves to be blind to a greater cause just so that we can maybe minister to one person and the Bible does reference those kinds of things, but I think we have to always be doing these things in wisdom. When we go to minister to one person, if it is going to damage a bunch of other people, if, if we're going to go and try to bring comfort to someone and call it love, but yet at the same time it causes damage to or it hurts a whole group of others, yeah. we might be bordering on what we would call that worldly type of love. We have to be careful. That's where we have to... Pardon? Example. Example. Okay, here, here's, a, here's a good example. Young boy makes a mistake. He's, uh, he throws something off the edge of a bridge or an overpass, lands on a vehicle, hurts the people inside the vehicle, several cars crash behind him, lots of people hurt, some killed. Dad finds out about it. He loves his son. Won't, he knows what his son did. They don't tell anybody. Is that really love? No. That's not godly love. That's worldly love. And we're painting a picture here. Because the Bible is very clear that we abide by the laws of the land. With the Bible is seen, this is where we have to tie it back to the commands, the things that the Bible tells us. These are the standards. If we're trying to figure out the type of love that God has, we have to be able to agree with the Word. If we're trying to do it in a way that is disagreeing with the Word and calling it love, it might be worldly love. It may not be the love of God. That's what we're called to share. That's what we're called to be able to recognize. That's what brings joy the Bible says. Bob, we've got a mic here. The example we did with Bob was enabling. You've got a person that's got a, it's an alcoholic or an addict and grandma won't take her arm out around his back, out from around his back and let him hit the bottom and do what he needs to do. 
And uh, she loves him, and she's doing it out of love, but it's, it's what's keeping him where he's at. Right. And see, if you just watch social media, guys, you watch the news today, it's, they hammer out the one little scenario. You know, the police officer that shot a dog. He shot a dog, he shot a dog, he shot a dog. This dog belonged to a young child over here. This child's heartbroken, this child's heartbroken, this child's heartbroken. That dog bit four kids. And that dog was getting ready to bite another. And that police officer shot that dog. So we're calling it hate. This was a hate move. <laughs> you see how, I mean, you guys are getting me here. We have to become so, we have to write, that's twisted. We have to rightly divide the word of truth. And the only thing that we have is the scriptures. Because listen, emotions, sentiment, even caring for someone can get in the way where our soul gets so connected to somebody, we're willing to leave what the Word says is right and call, uh, and, and we're, we're willing to take what the Word calls wrong and say it's okay. Good. That we can't do that. That's not who we're called to be. And here's the thing. The idea that our love is going to help them to overcome the, what we're calling worldly love. That's not true. Godly love is what helps people overcome every time. We like to make sure that we understand God in, its, in His fullness. And I'm just going to say this today. I see a lot of smart people in this house tonight. I see a whole lot of smart people in this house tonight. Put it all together. We don't even have, we're not even a drop in the, buck, or in the ocean to how, how wise and how knowledgeable and the things that He, and His love is so much higher above our love. His ways are so much higher than our ways. And we have to keep Him in that position where when Daddy says it's good enough, we don't have to have some intellectual uh, diagram to be able to explain some of these things or an intellectual uh, you know, position that we can communicate to say, well, this is why. Some of it, we just got to trust Him. Because I mean, he, that's, that's Him being sovereign in our life. And so we want to make sure that our definition of love is so accurate. And our expression of love is so accurate. And so let, let's just shift a little bit. I, when we think about love, you know, we think, um, well, I know for myself, I've done this time or two. I've, I have expressed what it would be deemed as love because, you know, love is patient, love is kind. So if it's kindness, if it's patience, all these things, you know, showing someone that you love them. You can, I, I've done it before. I can do that with a, with a hook that's included in that love. You got something, Brock? Could we cue the mic, please? I like how you pointed out when you were reading the scripture, you went back and said, my love. My love. Because, I mean, even when the, the religious leaders come up to Jesus and they say, what's the greatest? And it, of course, it's talking about keep my commandments. They said, what is the greatest commandment? Knowing that, that hook you're talking about. They're trying to get him to stumble into something. He basically says, if you want a religious answer, I'll give you one. And he gives them the... Love thy Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and love your neighbor as itself. And then a short time later, he looks at the boys and says, but I'm going to give you a new commandment. And That's this right. new commandment is that you love one another the way that I have loved you. Amen. Bingo. That's the scripture that ties this together. So there's love with a hook. Okay. It, it's, and you, you've all been around... Somebody that's done this, maybe I've done it to you. I don't know. I hope not. If I have, I'm sorry and forgive me and we'll, we'll work through it. But, you know, hey, you look nice today. <laughs> you look good too. Thank you. Okay, I look good too. I mean, it, and I know that's just, you know, that, that's where jokingly we say that, but really, love sometimes can have that element there. And the Lord knows the intention, the, the intents of the heart. Look, there's nothing... Hey, if you're going to do a good gesture and you're doing it maybe out of uh, bad motives, still good to do a good gesture. It's better than not doing anything at all. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, well, that's... It's 
you know, you got this worst scenario where you, we just won't love anybody. And where, you know, so there's a progression here is what I'm saying. And so love with a hook sometimes. I always want to ask the Lord, Lord, if, if that's in me, if I've got a motive, if I'm, I'm trying to do something here that, that, you know, that's something in the bushes, help me to recognize that and not do it. Help me not to be that way. I don't want to be that way. Get that stuff out of me. Cast, you know, make sure that that's as far from me as possible. And you know, with um, the idea that love has a hook, he was always selfless. Jesus made us uh, uh, possible for us to get saved, but he didn't force us to. He just made a way. Now that's something for his friends. He made a way. And so I need to wrap this up and I'm I don't feel like I got where I needed to go, but that's all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna bring it to a close here. Loving as humans, a carnal love, let's just call it okay. But loving in Christ's love is greater. Greater love has no man. And so, I'm not saying that we got to walk around on eggshells. But I do believe that when we look at what he talks about in love, and he talks about the commands being connected, it kind of goes back to that same old debate Faith and works. What's it take to be saved? You know, faith or works. You know, do you have faith without works? No. There no faith without works is what? Faith that's dead is not alive. It's not faith. I mean, it, it's kind of the old. It's, we go right back to some of these things that have been argued and debated in churches for years and years and years, and that's why we have de denominational division on some of these things. But for us, let's let's... If we could, I share this tonight with a hope of this, that we would ask God, would, Lord, would you show us when we're involved in worldly love and when we're actually walking in Christ's love, your love? Because I believe he'll show us that. And, and, I, and I fully believe this, that there's fruit that comes from being in, in Christ's love what the word says there's joy how many of you in here would like an extra helping of joy Amen. double dose come on give, give it to me and so if we could we've been sitting here long enough i'm going to slam on the brakes here and we're going to close time has run out i uh, wish we had some more time to get a little further but let's stand up and we'll, we'll close out here and, and again my heart in sharing this tonight and i really believe for us to as a people if we will just ask him to show us and help us to stay centered on His being ambassadors of His love and not worldly love. Amen. So let's just bow our heads. Lord, sometimes we might even dupe ourselves in, in, in what kind of love we're sharing or expressing or, or what it is that we may be uh, saying is love and maybe it's not, Lord. So we want to repent of that. We're sorry. We're thankful that you hear our, our hearts as repenting hearts tonight. And Lord, we, we trust that in your hearing our prayer, you also give us insight to understand and to, to be able to know when our motives are a little bit off. Because you're so gentle and you're so kind, Lord, that you'll, you'll tap us on the shoulder and let us know that, hey, that's, that's not the right kind, of, that's not my love. And so, Lord, help us to always examine these things through the, the lens of, of your scriptures, your holy scriptures. Lord, we thank you for grace that helps us to keep the commands as we walk in love. And Lord, that you say that there's fruit and fruit of abundance, fruit that remains. Lord, we get to be recipients and part of that, distributors of those things. And Lord, also that you said that we, in, in all this, we would be able to know a joy, your joy, your joy being full in us. And so that's, Lord, what we declare tonight. Lord, help us to be full of your joy as we walk this out, as we grow up in it, as we mature in these things and we develop in them. And I say thank you for grace that finds all of us in here in this house. I just speak grace, grace, grace to walk in love 
the love of heaven all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.